Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Gentleman who will be the next Battle Pass reward character. Visually we do see that the gentleman looks pretty geared up. I think when we had him previously he was just kind of suit and tie and you can still see the suit and tie underneath this very nice long jacket that he's got on. I'm still looking very secret agent, and he is, of course, going to be an alert character as well. Um, he's going to be using the pistol, but you can see a nice, like, P90. It looks like it's uh, hanging down by his side. Now, if we would have seen that in the original art, it would have been easy to predict that he was going to be an alert character. This guy was the one that was kind of in the up in the air in terms of what trait he was going to turn out as. And it's because of the art on the left-hand side. Not much is given away here. Not much is given away. Could have been any trait, honestly. Um... Most likely, a lot of people thought he was going to be melee, but he is going to be ranged. It is going to be an alert character, of course. So if we check out the stats as a Limit Break 3, level 720 character, he has got 17,551 attack, 15,044 defense, and 17,551 HP. He is an alert character, considered a damage dealer, mythic character, of course, and he is, of course, as well, a member of the New World Order. Now, first of all, we will check out the gentleman's adrenaline rush, and it is called Bad Manners. It's a 55 AP cost rush. Deal 800% damage to a single enemy. One other enemy gets impaired for two turns. So, a very speedy rush, considering it seems to be more of an offensive rush. This does mean you could potentially use a stat weapon on attack, you know, get some other good things going. We have to see what the signature move turnaround is in terms of speed. If it's a first turn, second turn start, and it's, you know, one, two turn cooldown, then it should be, it should be okay. Um, when we see uh, the sort of damage output that he's gonna have, 800% is a lot, and this can be magnified by, you know, certain things, obviously buffs and, uh, and specialist skills. So there is the potential for this damage to be a lot higher. However, this will not be able to take weapon effects into account because it can't actually crit. But I don't mind this too much. I think we've got quite a lot of characters that have the chance of reflecting damage a lot. Gentleman's not going to have any reflect issues, kind of like Gold Mythic Andrea. No reflect issues on the rush, at least. Except with characters that have it inbuilt into their passes, for instance, like Mercer. So this is actually pretty nice. So we have got the rush up on the gentleman and we're going to select someone on the defense team. I'm going to select this character with defense down. You're going to do amplified damage. That's pretty good. Trait damage as well would be pretty good. Rush comes in. 800% hit. We'll hit pretty hard. No chance to crit. It will be flat damage every single time. Um, that is the downside of course. But like I said before, no chance of reflect. No chance of like being stunned. And this, this feel, will feel a bit alien to some people just because we've got so many multi-hit characters out there now you can see that one character did get impaired and that was the um alice up the top right hand corner so there's a little bit of control in this kit as well it's not as super as let's say someone like um lydia who has double stun but it is still some some control so i, I don't think this is a terrible thing in my opinion and while we do have quite a few alert damage dealers out there you know we've got like sandy laurie and then we've also got Shiva and other characters that can do damage, but not necessarily actual damage role characters like Carol. This character is actually providing a damage like type that we're not seeing, like non-reflectable damage, non-multi-hit within alerts. So it is going to be a nice little like addition, in my opinion. And 800% is a lot, you know, and especially like with the multipliers and the fact that you can get this guy's attack stat up reasonably high. It should be, it should be good. It should be good. If we look at the um, upgrades. Strange enough, AP cost is reduced to 55 on grade three. I, I don't know why it's happening, but that's pretty good. Normally, you'd have 55 AP on defense team characters, but it is where it is. If we look at grade five, it gets a 200% damage boost, so it goes from 400% to 600%. And at grade limit break two. There's another 200% damage boost, so it'll go from 600% to 800%. The control will always be one character getting um, impaired for two turns, so that's pretty decent. Um, but yeah, the, the 55 just has my head scratching. Like, it, it, maybe he's got some potential on the defense team, but you know, I, off the face of it, I can't really see how. And after seeing the signature move, I still i am not sure. I'm still not sure how uh, this guy could be used on the defense team. It is called Charmer. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one. 
Cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Deal 300% damage to a single enemy. One other enemy gets minus 40% defense for two turns. So this is one of the hardest hitting first turn signature moves in the game. But it is worth noting, I don't think this is able to crit. Because of the, the, the wording here, it says deal 300% damage. That's the same as his rush, is deal 800% damage. That is the same as Andrew's rush, which is deal X amount of damage. If it says make an attack of 300 damage, that one can crit. The wording is always important in terms of whether it can crit or not. You can test this out with certain characters where their rushes can crit. For instance, Rosita, Fast Rosita, her rush can crit, and it's based on the wording. But this is still going to be quite a lot. You can amplify this still with the stats. You can ampl amplify this still with buffs. But, you know, crit damage is huge. But this, again, means no reflect potential. So if you do have, like, reflect walkers on a... On a, on a stage of SR, this guy you know that you can take him out and have no issues. If you've got like a character like Mercer pops up randomly, you know you can actually attack him with this guy. You're going to do trait damage and also you're not going to have any reflect issues. So it isn't actually a terrible thing to have a character on your roster that ha can actually not be reflected. The only thing that where he's going to have issues is uh, basic attacks. Now the 40% defense down is actually pretty nice. And because this isn't determined by him actually taking a character out, you can lead with the gentleman and then follow up with someone like Laurie. And then obviously the character that you follow, you know, follow up gets taken out. Laurie will debuff the entire team. So it can be a nice little combo between those two characters, seemingly. Okay, so we are going to do the signature move off of turn one. And I have tested it out. It definitely does not crit, guys. It's a 100% does not crit because it doesn't take into effect... Um, the 45% attack when enemies' HPs are above 50% weapon. And that's an easy way to know if, uh, if things can crit or not. So we'll use the signature move right now. And it basically works as expected. We do take a character out. But the bonus is if, if you manage to actually take the character out, the defense down will go on to someone else. So it's not like you're losing that. So it will still work. So potentially you could... Uh, you could try and do like um, an opening signature move with someone like Lydia and get them down to like 10% HP. They've got crosshairs. You can finish them off with gentlemen. They are decapped and then someone else will get defense down for the next turn. And that can be really, really nice for like other rushes or basic attacks and so on and so forth. So I don't think this is too bad at all. Um, and, and like I said, reflect is a big problem. Reflect, reflect is a big problem within mods. And it's very frustrating. And this guy, if you are frustrated with that, you can utilize this guy heavily in your attack teams. Now, looking at the upgrades on this signature move, you can see at grade two, it gets minus one to cooldown. So it goes from three turns to two turns. At grade four, you get minus one to start in cooldown. So it goes from two turns down to one turn. At limit break one, it gets 150 damage boost. So it actually doubles from 150% to 300%. That is actually a big boost. But then at limit break three, you get an additional minus 20% defense. So it goes from 20% defense down to 40% defense down. Now, I'd say limit break one seems to be the big one here. If you want to uh, get the best out of uh, the gentleman when it comes to the signature move, for sure. Doubling that damage, especially as it can't crit, is going to be really important if you do want him to actually you know, hit really hard. And he definitely can. He definitely can. But personally, I'm pretty happy that this is, I think, the first character in the game that has... A rush and a signature move other than Zachary that is dealing with reflect in terms of like it can't be reflected. Every other character either has a signature move or a rush that can be reflected by like just basic mods. So it seems like this guy is kind of here for as like the answer to that. Now of course the gentleman has some mythic abilities, his passive skills. He is a damage dealer so he gets agility and this is where it gets kind of strange. He doesn't get a boost to his damage on his rush or his signature move with agility. So you might not want to upgrade this. He will get a boost to his basic attacks. It is based on how much military supplies you have and whether it's actually worthwhile doing. But, you know, for other characters who have signature moves that actually do on hit and rushes that do multi hit, the agility is great. But not so much for gentlemen, not so much. So it is down to your sort of a uh, military supply situation. The next one is called Benevolent. When this character kills a target, one other teammate gets 30% attack for two turns. You might have actually noticed this from when I was uh, 
when I was doing some previous clips uh, of the signature move, I think um, one of the, I think it was Glenn, maybe got a 30% attack. I'm not sure. I tested it out a couple of times. But yeah, I, I think that's okay. It obviously won't do anything if you have like an alert attack or a strong attacks weapon with three characters. It's, it's a kind of meaningless buff. But otherwise, it is going to give an attack buff. I, I guess it's okay. I, I would prefer, honestly, something else. I don't think this is amazing. Um, because I think if you're going to use percentage damage, those sort of weapons are kind of important. The next one is called Enthralled. He gets 100% impair resistance. This is cool. You don't have to worry about impair. Now, the only issue is he is a alert character. And impair is primarily on tough characters. You wouldn't really attack a tough base team with him so you're not going to be really running into impair that much if this was like taunt that would have been awesome because taunt is very meta right now uh or if this was stun because uh there are potential like strong characters out there that this guy could be used against that have stun and so on and so forth but um you never know there could be a character that comes out in the future that has uh you know an impair on their kit but um when it comes to their passives but because his rush and signature move don't proc anything you know you don't actually proc the passives either is that that is worth noting you don't proc things like stun on defense passives so that is actually pretty good the next one is called reticent i think this is a reticent when this character kills a target one other target gets minus 40 ap so this guy is actually kind of weird he is like a semi controller he does have to take characters out for it to actually happen, but he can potentially control. You know, he's got control on his rush. He's got a bit of control here. Minus 40 AP is good. I don't think it's good enough on a defense team to stop a command. You can potentially still get that character commanded the next turn. Um, it, I think it depends on the AP gain on their weapon. But um, yeah, so, uh, but still, it's, it's very, very powerful. And uh, I don't mind a little bit of control. I actually kind of like it. I think a lot of damage dealers are kind of lacking. If they're pure damage, it's kind of like, it's kind of obvious. Like someone like Andrea, you know what she's doing, but like if she's not um, hitting really hard, she's not doing anything else. Whereas this guy, even if he doesn't, you know, destroy somebody, there's going to be, you know, potential um, defense down, impair. And if he finishes someone off, you will have the minus 40 to AP. So yeah, not too bad at all. Okay, so we are on the first turn and I am going to do the signature move on to Harper up here. We are going to take her out like we did before. Watch the green buffs, the text that go above the gentleman's name. It should be 30% attack to a teammate and minus 40 AP on an enemy. Now, it's random where the AP drain actually goes. I think it can even potentially AP drain someone with no AP. Um, the AP drain's completely random, I think. Um, but one of these characters will just be zeroed out on the AP. We hope for Doc Stevens because he's very close to his rush, but we'll see. Signature move comes in. It is going to be Maggie who gets uh, defense down and she also loses her AP. She did lose her AP. Now on the second turn, watch the uh, watch the um, green text above the gentleman's name again. It should say that he gets an attack boost here. It should say attack like 20% because of agility. So he's going to get a 45% attack from his weapon and then the 20% extra damage because of agility. Now if I command him and then rush... He might get the boost for taking down a character, so 30% um, attack to a teammate. But that's it. That's it. Or, or, or he'll do AP Drain as well, potentially. He will do AP Drain as well. But you, you will not see the 20% bonus attack here. You will not see the 20% bonus attack. Teammate, 30% attack. And then minus 40 AP. And we did actually have an impair resist come in, but no 20% attack. And that's because it doesn't work with his rush. Doesn't work with his signature move. Kind of a strange situation there. And it kind of makes the gentleman's passives kind of cheap. Where a lot of characters can be quite expensive in terms of military supplies. I don't think anything in his kit here is vital. It's just kind of nice. Like the impair resistance is kind of nice. The AP down is kind of nice. That's pretty much it. The attack boost to teammates isn't even that nice. It's just like it's an attack boost to teammates. It's like okay because it's one teammate. Nothing here is vital to get the gentleman to actually hit harder. Like, a lot of his power is in his rush and his signature move. And that is quite good for people who are, like, fresh to the game. Or people who are kind of, like, don't have huge amounts of resources. 
and um, you're still going to get pretty decent amount of uh, his power without putting too much military supplies into him. So I don't think that's terrible. But we do have the first half of Benevolent at Grade 1, first half of Agility at Grade 2, second half of Benevolent, so that 15% attack to a teammate like stacking up to 30%, will be maxed out by grade three. Enthralled part one at grade four, so that's 50% impair resistance. Reticent grade five is going to uh, is going to come in. That's the first half. It's going to be minus 20 AP. Then we get agility two at limit break one. Enthralled two at limit break two, and then reticent two at limit break three. So, you know, I think the probably the most important one here for him would maybe be the impair resistance and the AP drain. Now, those are the most important ones to upgrade. Um, they are the harder ones to get maxed out as well because you will be required to get limit break two and limit break three but like i say if, if you want to go for agility it's basic attacks only and well it's up to you on the 15 percent attack or 30 percent attack to a teammate it wouldn't really make much difference to me personally now the other part of the gentleman's kit that is going to amplify the damage that he does on his rush and the damage that he does on his signature move is his special skill and i'll test this out just to make sure because it does tell you if you do bonus damage and basically anyone who is debilitated he'll do bonus damage against whenever this character deals damage to a fighter that is under the effect of a debilitating status they will do a hundred percent extra damage this is actually a lot because when it isn't like 100 percent added on it's a, a times 100 percent damage it's like having a hundred percent damage buff when you do this and it stacks with buffs so if you have like an alert weapon you know giving 40 percent attack buff and then you do the 800 percent rush it'll be a hundred percent of what the damage you're doing already again so it's, it's just like basically doubling it it's, it's really really powerful if you use it in the right circumstances so you have to do a debilitating status first and this can make up for the lack of crit on like that signature move and um and, and amplify that damage massively Okay, so we are going to do some tests here, and I have got Diamond, who has got first turn control on her signature move. She also has got some debilitating control on her specialist. Debilitating effects, uh, I think there are six of them. It is going to be stun, impair, confuse, taunt, daze, and normalize. It's things that, you know, stop the enemy from actually doing or utilizing parts of their kit or enforcing them to do something. So for instance, like taunt is enforcing an attack confuses enforcing a random attack sort of thing so things like defense down it isn't debilitating it just will enhance damage or like attack down reduce damage it's pretty straightforward so what i'll do is i'll stun on diamond but notice the specialist skill of gentleman right now is grayed out when i do the stun you can see it lights up just to tell me hey there are some characters where i can get a little bit of a boost here now just check the text out we will see if it works with this signature move and rush i'm fairly certain it will it should say plus 100% damage, but you should notice in the damage I do, it should be amplified. I think I was hitting her for about 20k before, and now I'm hitting her for 50k. So uh, yeah, it looks like it's doing quite a little bit more damage. And we're, we'll just go to the next turn. I'll try and get a, a rush up on, um, on Gentleman, which we should be able to get. Um, and we can see we have got someone with a debilitating status effect just from having rick on the team so we don't actually have to do the uh the diamond signature move or sorry the diamond specialist skill but um i can do a basic attack on gentleman or i can uh hit a crit here and then if i target maggie we'll just see a text above his head i don't think it actually says whether he gets the 100 percent boost it doesn't say that he's getting the boost from um from the specialist skill but we can just compare the damage from before when he attacked Harper to, you know, now when she actually has a debilitating status effect. And it is kind of obvious, especially as this does not crit. So, yeah, that's actually pretty decent. So I like his special skill and I do think Cutthroat is actually kind of underrated. And it works really well on his kit. Because he can't crit, he does need to get amplification from somewhere else. And guess what? Cutthroat does that. So this is absolutely perfect. I like this. This has worked really, really well, in my opinion. I think this, I don't think you really could have had a better specialist skill other than, let's say, on a roll. That, that would probably be the only other one because that would increase his attack just based on, you know, the on a roll stacking up. But this is giving him, like, what is it? Is it going to be, like, three or four turns of on a roll? 
just as long as the person has a debilitating status effect on it. So I like this. I think this is a good combo here. Now the gentleman does not have an attached weapon and I, while I do think it would be pretty straightforward what you want to build for this guy, as high attack as possible basically. 1535 still even though he's not going to be getting any real bonuses from the crit side of it, he's still going to get some nice bonuses from the, uh, from the attack side and, and, and adjacent teammates will get bonuses from the crit. He is kind of weird because he's a 55 AP character. So you could potentially go for some HP, you could potentially go for some AP on defense. You know, if he does get targeted, he'll rush much quicker. It is very rare that you have characters that have the possibility to be able to use, utilize uh, AP on defense uh, on an attack team. And because he is a, a damage dealer, he might get, you know, focused a little bit. So, you know, it actually could work where he gets a natural turn to rush. His first turn signature move will give him 35. He only needs to get 20 AP. You know, as a damage dealer, he will take a large percentage hit to his HP if he does get attacked. So it could work really nicely. The third slot's kind of difficult because you can't utilize splash damage. You can't utilize the 45% attack when the enemy's HP is over 50%. So you're going to have to come up with some ideas here. You're going to have to come up with some ideas. There might be some, you know, special or like maybe even one that is in one of the sort of like non-crit options that boosts attack somehow, just flat rate. So it is definitely worth looking through your armory to check out something that could potentially work here. But in the meantime, you can easily just put a pistol in his hands. Simple as that. You know, don't have to work too hard on, on getting a weapon working for the gentleman. So that is Gold Mythic Gentleman. And like I said, he will be the reward coming to the next battle pass. And I actually think he's pretty decent. He's actually giving us something that we don't have. It's an option within alerts. You know, when it comes to damage that, you know, isn't going to be reflected. I do like the potential with the whole like cutthroat and stuff like that can amplify the damage quite nicely. I think visually it looks pretty cool too. Um, pretty geared up, geared to the nines as we say. Um, but do tell me your thoughts uh, on this character. What do you think about him going into the next battle pass? Do you like the idea of him not being able to crit and then getting amplification from the specialist skill on top? I think that, that kind of works nicely. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments down below. That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving guys. Keep on surviving.